Hi, welcome to Virtual Newsmakers. I'm here with my co-host, I'm Debbie Ellickson, I'm here with my co-host Cynthia Seymour and we have a very special guest today. We have Steve Messler who is a three-time Olympian and a gold medalist with the uh, night train bobsleigh team from the 2010 Olympic Winter Games. Now Steve has quite a background but one of the things <laughs> in sports and he's actually uh, we go back a, a few years ourselves we're part of the same um, football family but one of the things that has the reasons we wanted to uh, have Steve on this show is because one of the ventures that he's working with is called Classroom Champions and it's a mentorship program where Olympians are paired with students and help them with leadership skills, goal setting, and all sorts of neat things. And it's not his only um, philanthropic work. A lot of one of the I don't know if he'll share this with us, but one of the volunteer uh, things that he does is he volunteers at the Ronald McDonald House, and he just doesn't just volunteer. He sits and plays. Uh, video games for some of the kids there and I think that's pretty neat just taking the time to spend with kids when you're volunteering like that instead of just going and and showing up so I want to welcome Steve and uh, thank you for coming let's hear hear a little bit about more about your background fill in the gaps from what I said and I mean I don't know where to start with asking you the question because being an Olympian is is quite a heady feat. I mean, it, it isn't for the faint of heart. And so talk to us about how you made that decision to become an Olympian and the sacrifices that you had to make to, to get to that gold medal. And then we can step into the other side of your career. Sounds good. Well, thanks for having me both. Um, <clears throat> boy, you went through a whole bunch of things there. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll, like we said, we'll start with, um, we'll start with making the decision to become an Olympian, but that's, it's funny, people talk about um, sacrifice and they say you're, sa you know, you sac you're sacrificing right now as you're an athlete and, and really, I mean, I talk to athletes all, you know, about this all the time where sacrificing to me, sacrificing is a past tense word. Should never be used in, in. It shouldn't be used in present tense. You're doing what you need to do to succeed. Period. Uh, at no point did I did I think of or, or look at uh, lack of you know lack of an income or a stable income, uh, being away from family and friends, uh, having moved to a foreign country. At no point did I ever look at any of those things as simply doing the things that I needed to do to succeed. So as I look back, I can look back now after I've been retired for a few years, and say, boy, those sacri that was that was sac those were sacrifices. Uh, now that I've realized what being, you know, moving out of the Olympic world and moving into the, the quote-unquote normal world, the real world as we used to call it, uh, is, so it wasn't really much of a decision. I went from track and field, and I had a lot of injuries in track and field over the years, and was, you know, understood that track wasn't going to be the path that I was going to take, um, but at the same time, I wasn't ready to be done being an athlete yet, so I found bobsled, uh, messaged them, and, and I had to turn some things around in my head, but um, it worked out after 10 years and three Olympics. So, so what the commitment and what you learn from having to, you know, push your your athleticism to that level to an Olympian, uh, how does that translate into what you're doing now with Classroom Champions? It's funny, I uh, we just had this I had this conversation with somebody just the other day where. Um, <clears throat> I've become the biggest, one of our employees for Classroom Champions is a guy named Gideon Massey. Gideon Massey's our programs manager, and Gideon was a two-time track cyclist, and he and I get along great when we're doing this. He was also an athlete mentor in his, la in his you know, heading, into, heading towards the London Games, of which he didn't wind up, uh, he didn't, he failed to qualify for those games, but he was an athlete mentor with Classroom Champions that year, and then he volunteered with us last year, and then this year is a full-time job. And he has the work ethic like no one else that I work with in the corporate world. Uh, and what I realized is the same things that you know drove me to become eventually a gold medalist and world champion in, in you know, the Olympic level bobsled 
where the things, the meticulousness of, uh, of nothing ever is perfect, you can always find those extra hundreds in bobsled. You can always find extra hundreds. So <clears throat> around classroom champions, we're always, my sister and I, Lee, uh, who has her PhD in education and social policy, who takes care of our education initiative side uh, of things, we're always looking for those hundreds. We're always looking to see how we can make the organization better. And I see that in Gideon. I see that in so many other Olympians. So uh, I'm always a huge advocate for people to hire Olympians. Um, if they lack the experience, whatever they lack in experience, they certainly make up for in um, their understanding of finding hundreds. Mm -hmm. So so let's talk a little bit about classroom champions, and then I'm going to turn the mic over to uh, Cynthia for the next questions, because I'm sure she's she's got quite a few. So tell us what Classroom Champions really is from your perspective and how you got it started. And like how did this come out of the blue? Like why this yeah. particular program? So what Classroom Champions is, uh, it's a network of Olympians and Paralympians who uh, have taken it upon themselves, who have volunteered their time and understood that just heading into a school one time and giving a talk and leaving isn't enough uh, to teach kids valuable lessons. Um, Anybody in marketing knows that in order to learn something, we have to hear it seven times. Kids are no different. Uh, you need to hear things, and they all, the Olympians also are a bunch of Olympians who understand that they have more to offer than, than just teaching kids the, the fitness and health side, that they have uh, the ability to you know, excite kids about setting goals, about persevering through challenges, about involving themselves in the community, about fair, playing fair. So what Classroom Champions is is a group of those uh, athletes facilitated by Classroom Champions connecting with teachers in schools across the U.S. and Canada, uh, sending monthly lessons themselves on, on how they go through you know, some of those things I mentioned from goal setting to fair play. Uh, and at the same time, it gives kids the voice to send things back. And teachers and kids work on projects every month around whatever their athlete has taught them. If the athlete says, you know, I set goals by doing A, B, and C, yeah, the kids will then be really excited to set goals because they want to show their athlete how they set goals about A, B, and C. And it's not about you know, this kid wants, uh, one student wants to play baseball and one student wants to, you know, be a football player. It's that, you know, a, you know, a young girl wants to learn how to play the clarinet and yet she's been given, now she's been given the steps to how to get there and set that goal. And, and somebody else wants to be a doctor and they can set that goal. So the lessons the athletes teach wind up being, uh, you know, more of leadership and citizenship skills than athletic skills. And that's what Classroom Champions is about. It's about... Uh, an actual connection, a, a, a long-lasting connection throughout an entire school year, supporting teachers, supporting students. So what you're saying is that you match a, 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 a professional athlete with a classroom, and then the whole classroom has um, a mentoring program with the athlete? Exactly. So you wind up with uh, each athlete is assigned anywhere from four to seven or eight, um, in the future possibly up to ten classrooms, um, still fairly intimate, and every month the athlete makes messages for those classrooms, makes one lesson, but you know, at the beginning of the year the, the athlete knows who the classrooms are, so they mention the teacher's name, uh, gets put in the video editing. So these kids know that the athlete is talking to them, they're not making a message for the masses, they're talking to them, but at the same time, all of those videos go live on classroomchampions.org, so any teacher can hop on and you know, as they're watching the Olympic Games coming up, as they're getting their kids excited about the Olympics, uh, they can hop on and pick an athlete and go through the values lessons that this athlete has taught, and all those things are for free for teachers outside of the program at classroomchampions.org as well. Wow. So these are almost personal growth coaching sessions that you teach mindset to these kids. What age groups? Uh, we focus on kindergarten to grade eight. Um, so oh, great. Kindergarten, kindergarten to, to eighth grade. Um, we look at we, we try to look at those formative years. We try to look at those those years where um, kids are oftentimes in one classroom setting the whole day. So the teacher has the ability outside of maybe seventh and eighth grade, uh, maybe sixth grade in some locations. But you know, majority of our classrooms, the teacher has the ability to bring the athlete into every single moment of the day. Uh, we have a test tomorrow. We have a test tomorrow. What would Kurt do? Well, Kurt would. Kurt would make sure he goes home and works hard and studies yeah. first before he goes and plays. And they yeah. learn that, and they want to emulate their role model. They want to emulate their athlete mentor. So let me ask you this. Um, these are How do you vet these athletes? Because my question is, we, we have the Miami Heat and all these teams down here, and sometimes the athletes step out of line themselves. So how do you we, deal uh, with that? We, uh, we, do a, we have a pretty big vetting process. Um, mm -hmm. 
right now we work with Olympians and Paralympians um, who are you know just as hardworking as professional athletes. Uh, maybe don't find as much mischief sometimes themselves, but <laughs> we uh, we go through in all seriousness. We go you know we go through a vetting process. We have somebody who does re who does background checks and research checks on our on our athletes. We want people who are not only talking to talk but are walking the walk, and we have that conversation with the athletes in the summertime during orientation. Um, you know, we have a lot of contact with our athletes. We ask a lot of them, but at the same time, we feel like they get a lot back because they actually get to see every athlete who uh, you know who writes a blog or goes to a school or gives a talk or does anything. They have no idea what their actual impact is. They have no idea when they go to a school and they leave. They have no idea if those kids have actually internalized anything and right. done anything. But Classroom Champions gives them this ability to see. We have an internal platform, and you know that we run on a Ning platform that. Our teachers and athletes is a private space that the athletes get sent. You know, get sent what's happening in their classroom, so they actually get to see. Like, I actually made this. I went out of my way to do this, but you know what? Like, it's actually impacting real kids on the ground. So, so our athletes get a lot you're back. You're creating to it. more of a community and a series of relationships, not just broadcasting their voice out. Are they using? Are you using Google Hangouts to have um, conversations between the athletes and the kids? Yep, absolutely. So uh, a couple times a year. So once, and we want to let that we want to let that relationship take hold via just video lessons back and forth. Kids are enamored by it; they're connected by it uh, more so than you and I are. We we need we're better off over coffee than we are over Google Hangout. Kids these right. days, this is natural for them. This is normal. Um, so in November, December, our athletes all volunteer an extra few hours of their time to have 20, 30 minute Google Hangouts or Skype calls with their. Uh, with their athlete mentor, with their kids in their classrooms, and they do one-on-one -on -one them in their class, and they kind of just like they sit down for a couple hours, and they get to run through all their classrooms, and then they'll do nice. another one in the fall. They will do another one in the spring in uh, May June. Uh, they'll do another live chat, and/or they'll go visit um, in person their classrooms. What's and is this, oh, go ahead. is this that? all over um, North America, or where? Wh which classrooms are you focusing on? Yeah, we're all over U.S. and Canada. We focus on uh, in the U.S. We focus on uh, purely low socioeconomic, so we focus on uh, schools that have a student population that would be 50% or more free and reduced price lunches. Um, so that's okay. kind of our cutoff. It's easy information to find in the U.S. on what those schools yeah. are. Uh, we go to you know we want those classrooms. We want those schools. Um, for a handful of reasons, when we did the first, when we did the pilot program when I was an athlete, um, my, it was just my sister and I doing this, just because we wanted to do something um, more impactful than just that that one visit. We really saw the kids in those situations gravitated more, you know, heavily towards towards me. Um, they 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 really latched on to having someone in their lives who who was doing big things. Um, so that's where we wanted to go. We also provide technology to the school, so all of our classrooms are donated. We donate iPads to them. We donate. Some of our classrooms get Apple TVs and flat screen televisions and tech cards. So to really try to close that digital divide is also an important thing for us uh, as well. Um, in Canada, we look at low socioeconomic, so similar things. Uh, we also look at low access. So in Canada, you have uh, you know a lot of schools that are a lot of cities, a lot of towns that are just so far away from where big population densities are. The kids don't have an opportunity to experience the world, and they don't have an opportunity to go through cool programs because those cool programs are. Are revolving around where millions of people are, so there's bigger impact. Well, since we're virtual, we can be anywhere. So we're in small, you know, Dawson Creek, Northern British Columbia, um, to as far out as you know, uh, Eastern Ontario. Uh, and then we also look at in uh, Canada. Also, we try to take a, f a focus on their Aboriginal community, so their Native American community as well, where uh, you know those role models and that digital divide is, ne is needed to be closed. Wow. So, what is an example of uh, one of the lessons that you might uh conduct during the course of the year? Um, so, well, I mean, the athlete lessons are based around, if somebody you were to go to classroomchampions.org and hit lessons, you'd see the list of them, again, from goal setting to um, things. But an example would be, we'll stick with the goal setting one, that's the simplest people, simplest one for people to wrap their heads around. We do that in September, it's the beginning of the year, so kids can focus in and teachers can use it the rest of the year. Um, you know, somebody like Emily Cook, who's a uh, freestyle aerialist, Emily does a goal, you know, goal pyramid. Um, and she had based it off of Natalie Bergener, who was an athlete in the program in 2011-12, a weightlifter, um, and all Olympians. And they, you know, they have a triangle. At the bottom is the things they do every day. In the middle is, the, you know, the second layer is the things they do they need to do more often. And then, as their goal up to the top, if the goal is getting an A, you have to do well in your tests. You have to study well. You have to eat well and sleep well so you can study well and all all those things. So 
you know, what the teachers do is the athletes send their video lesson, and then our teachers create their own lesson around it. So either we have a huge library now, a reservoir of lesson plans um, that are both internal and a lot of them get put on our external site. Um, and teachers, you know, have these blank things, and they put, you know, give kids their blank goal-setting pyramid because Emily, the teachers will watch the lesson, then form their lesson plan, and then run it in the class. So the teachers have the ability to show the lesson whenever they want. It's not like an athlete's coming tomorrow at, at 8 a.m., we have to be ready. It's when will this work into my curriculum? When will this work into what we're working on in class? Um, and as well, say we're working on a geography lesson, and Emily happened to have sent that from China. Well, maybe we can. Maybe I can work around our geography and make sure that we have some Asian things in there, so the kids are going to get really excited about China as well. So it gives the teachers full flexibility, um, full ability to build whatever lesson plan in their class they want around their own core curriculums. Uh, in the U.S. and Canada, there's different things across the. I mean, U.S. it's getting a little more standardized, but in, in Canada, it's very provincially, uh, you know, sensitive. So teachers are able to make it their own, and we support them and help them do that. That's really great. So you're able to, they're able to watch these things on demand. So it's not like they're having to set this um, or embed this within their um, time frames or change what they're teaching in order to make sure these kids are getting these lessons. Yeah, no, it's, uh, we, we put them on our, they first go to our internal site, so they go to our internal site um, pretty much on the first of every month. So the athletes make them within the month before, so if it's January is right now we're in the middle of steps to success, so it's kind of a revisiting of goal setting, it's what are the things you do to get to success, you try something, you fail, you try something else, you keep trying, you know, those kind of things. Um, and it goes into the uh, it goes onto our private network on the first of every month, and then the teachers have the whole month to do whatever they want. Uh, and then by the end of the month, what they've done for the program is that they've actually to the internal site they've uploaded um, images of kids, you know, working on that. So our athletes get to see what's happening. Uh, they've uploaded a lesson plan that they were that they've done, so they can share it. So we wind up with this ginormous hundreds and hundreds of lesson plans at the same time uh, about the same different lessons around. You know, and we ask them to put their state or the provincial, um, you know, core standards on, the curriculum standards on there as well so that we can all learn from each other. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a pretty awesome thing to watch. So this isn't just a community for the kids and the athletes, but a community for the children, I mean, the teachers as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, our teacher focus is one of our biggest things. Hello. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's one of our biggest things is actually teacher support um, because they, we're not working with the kids specifically. Uh, the athletes are making the videos for the kids, but we don't, actually, <laughs> we don't actually touch the kids at that point. So the teachers, we work with the teachers, and the teachers work with the kids. So uh, teacher support, teacher training, we go through in the summertime. We have uh, uh, different ways for teachers to be able to learn more about what we do from we have our video editing experts talking to teachers about how to shoot video and how to edit video. We have our, Ooh, uh, we have you know one on our board, um, you know, works at Deloitte and she's a senior manager at Deloitte and works on their web content and social media. Lisa Minarski over there, she teaches their our teachers about social media uh, and how to you know involve. And also we have somebody on our advisory board who, uh, you know, runs a tech district uh, in North Carolina, and he's huge in social media world as well, so the two of them run a social media platform and training for our teachers. And then every month, our teachers actually, we facilitate our teachers hosting their own learning going to the next month. So we have content training for our teachers, and that's something that we really value. And my sister, Lee's background or doctorate, a lot of it is in teacher performance. So oh, That's excellent. Do you have any aspirations to work with high school students? We do. We, um, we've run some pilots in the past. Uh, and we're still trying to figure out the the difference would be increasing our capacity so we can do it. Um, the language is going to be different. The subjects are probably going to be different. Uh, the approach is going to be different. It's different to it's different to try. You know, we engage. We have massive engagement from K to eight. Uh, as you get to high school, you need to do different things to get them engaged, um, and that's something that we are we're slowly working on. Right now, we're really happy the space we're in. Um, we don't want to be everything to everyone. We want to focus on where we think we can have the biggest impact. Right now, we, you know, we, we used to think that was just three to eight, uh, but we've had some amazing teachers in, from K to two come in, and they've showed us that this can yeah. have a huge impact on on the younger ones too. That's excellent. So, at the end, you know, just do you have any tips for how um, business people might 
implement some of this or learn more about this or help out? Yeah, so that's a lot of our, thank you for asking, a lot of our, most majority of our funding comes from corporate sponsors uh, who, who believe in education in their community, in the places they either operate or they work or they own. Um, you know, we have uh, the ability for what we do is we have, we have open applications in the spring, so we have teachers who are able, to, we ask them to apply from everywhere in the U.S. and Canada. In fact, we're also starting a Costa Rica program uh, as well. Their school system year runs from February to November. Um, <clears throat> but every spring we look for applications. That'll be open during the Olympics. The application process will start. Uh, but what we also do is we, we look for our funders and our sponsors from foundations in the U.S. Um, to companies in the U.S. and Canada, and we ask them, where is it important for you? Uh, and we can give, we can put classrooms in their areas, uh, and we can seek out classrooms in their areas that are important for them to support. So, uh, you know, heading to classroomchampions.org uh, and hitting, you know, contact us, or just simply emailing me at steve at classroomchampions.org. Uh, there's a way for people to be able to, touch, you know, connect with the program and uh, see how they can get involved in. And the things we measure, we look at, we see huge increases in kids, uh, see increases in kids from their goal setting ability to their perseverance. Um, to their digital literacy, uh, we look at self-efficacy in certain areas. Um, those are the kind of measurements we're taking to to really track the growth of our kids in the program, as well as hearing from teachers that you know 100% of our teachers says classroom champions increases their classroom, you know, uh, significantly improves their classroom culture. Um, you know, almost 80% of our teachers say classroom champions makes them a better teacher. And if we can do that, if we can make teachers better, uh, if we can you know give kids the tools that they need to succeed. Um, again, whether it be uh, you know whether it be just understanding that a goal isn't just setting a goal, but it's just actually steps to get there. Uh, and if we can give athletes an experience that they uh, that they value and they feel like they're really making a difference, and they understand that their voice is powerful and that their voice does have a huge impact on kids, then as an organization, we're going to be you know we're going to be fulfilling all of our missions and all of our goals. Do you have big corporate sponsors? Because I could see Nike or Adidas or somebody like that just being all over this. Uh, we're still working on that. We're uh, we're finally getting to the place where I feel like we're ready uh, yeah. to move to that next level. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we keep our intimacy. We want to make sure that we don't scale up and lose our and lose our impact. But at the same time, with the re with the right resources and the right voice and the right messaging system and the right uh, you know, voice from some of our some some big partners. Uh, I think we can do a lot of really big things and have yeah. you know, just again. I can't wait to see what's going to happen during the month of January, months of January and February across the program as our kids get to see their their friends, their athletes, you know, compete on television. Mm. So if you if oh, I'm down in Florida, if I wanted to somehow be involved with this or just any person, how would we? get involved with what you're doing? Uh, again, from a teacher aspect, we, we encourage teachers to hop on and use the, the video lessons in whether they meet our socioeconomic standards or not in those schools. Uh, it's all something that we, you know, our athletes love for their messages to be heard in the classrooms and there's lesson plans on there for teachers to be able to use uh, to get their kids excited around different things. Um, from the volunteer aspect, we have a lot of different areas and a lot of different needs for the program as we're growing. So I think it's just reaching out to us at classroomchairmans.org and uh, and you know, having conversation about what what your skill sets are and uh, how what you can offer and, and be involved. We've got a great, huge uh, volunteer network that does a lot of things across the program for our infrastructure. Wow! So we end the show with a challenge of the week, and it can be anything that can, comes out of this broadcast or something in general. So, what challenge would you give our viewers and whether they're business or teachers or students uh, going through this week, what can help them push the needle on um, maybe using some of these platforms or in being a mentor? Uh, you know, I think to me, for my class, when I put my classroom champions hat on, or now that I'm in Canada, when I put my classroom champions toque on. Uh, <laughs> I would, I would challenge. I would say, uh, you know, in order to, I, you know, my main focus, my main impact is how can we impact uh, and use this program and use this organization to better the lives of kids and and let them, you know, learn from the Olympians and Paralympians. And I would say everybody knows teachers. Everybody, we had teachers. Everybody, whether you have friends or teachers or not, you have, you grew up with teachers. You have people. Everybody has a teacher in their life. In their life, I, uh, you know, my challenge would be to get 
classroomchampions.org on their radar. Um, get these things in there. Uh, we, I haven't seen anything that can engage kids as well as as being able to learn directly from an Olympian and hear it from somebody's, uh, you know, the, our Olympians are partners with the teachers in the classrooms. Um, they complement their teaching. So I would say, you know, find a teacher and get them either at Classroom Champs, you know, on Twitter or, you know, Classroom Champions on Facebook or classroomchampions.org and, and just help build awareness. Uh, and that's what's going to get, that's how it's going to get into more and more classrooms. So that would be my challenge, just help a teacher out and give them an extra resource by connecting them with Classroom Champions. Wow, that's terrific. I want to thank you for coming on our show. I know you're you're pressed for time, and thank you, Cynthia. And uh, we will see you uh, next week. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And.